If you're anything like me, you're a fan of computers. You know, we got laptops like this, we've got gaming computers, but sometimes those are too big. Sometimes we need computers that are a little bit smaller, like the Raspberry Pi, a world-renowned small single board computer. This, this, if you're not familiar, is a whole computer on a little board like this. They're small, they don't draw very much power, and they can be pretty powerful relative to the size, but there are some limitations. First and foremost, you see that right there? That is a micro SD slot, and that is the primary method of storage on this thing. And if you've ever played around with micro SD cards in pretty much any capacity, you probably know that they are prone to failure. Andy, how many SD cards do you think have died in the, the course of us working here? Probably hundreds. Really? Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Lost. Oh, losing them for sure. But more specifically, the endurance is the problem. You can't write files to them too many times before they just actually wear out. And when you run a full computer operating system like Raspbian, which is just Linux, you're gonna write to the thing. You might write a log file, you know, once every few seconds and eventually it just wears out. Uh, the other annoying part is powering the thing. These use USB-C, but a common use case for a small computer like this is to embed it in something like, I don't know, like a, a menu board at McDonald's or digital signage or something that controls your sprinklers. You can use them for anything, but it's just kind of annoying to get around those problems. Now, in order to expand the functionality and solve some of the problems I'm talking about, people have developed things called Raspberry Pi hats, which are just little boards that sit on top of your Raspberry Pi, kind of like a hat, to expand the functionality. And the coolest part about these newer Raspberry Pi 5s is they actually have a PCIe connection, a 1X PCIe Gen 2 lane, but you can set it to run at Gen 3 speeds. Not a ton of bandwidth, but enough to run something like this, which is an M.2 SSD. And these, these have endurance. Way more than a micro SD card anyways, but that still leaves us with the problem of power. And now finally, with a solution, the Pine Board Hat Drive PoE Plus which as the name implies, hat drive. It's a hat that has a drive and also has PoE+. If you're not familiar with PoE or power over ethernet, um, that basically explains it. The ethernet that's already on this Raspberry Pi 5, you can use to power the Raspberry Pi. And then you also have, boom, an M.2 slot. That means you've solved your power problem, you've solved your storage problem, and you can put this thing somewhere and hopefully not have to worry about it and not have to run a power cable. As for what else came in the box with our hat drive PoE, we have nine screws, eight of which are gonna be used for these little standoff things that'll hold our board above the Raspberry Pi. And the ninth one will be for screwing in our M.2 SSD. We have a little ribbon cable that'll handle our PCIe connection between the Raspberry Pi and this board for that SSD. We have a Pin extension, this one's cool. It's a little four pin -er, and if you look on the Raspberry Pi, you can see four little pins by the ethernet jack. Those are specifically there for handling PoE. So if PoE power comes into this, it's gonna extend off of those, and then now it can reach the board, which goes more like this. I'll put that on in a sec. Then there's the pin extension for the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi and a little spacer doodad for the M.2 to sit nicely. I don't know, products like this that are meant for like nerdy nerds, sometimes they just don't even come with instructions. You just gotta, you just gotta figure it out. Like with um, our LTT precision screwdriver set right here. Mmm, very orange, very precise very LTT store. I think I'm gonna use a different Raspberry Pi. Uh, I wanna use one that has the official Raspberry Pi cooler on it. A, just so it runs a little bit cooler, and B, because I wanna know if it all still fits. Got our standoffs on there. See that there? It says PCIe, that's where we wanna go. And the metal parts of the ribbon should face inward. Now for the fun part, trying to stick this on while also inserting the connector here. <laughs> Uh, not always the easiest thing to do. This is kind of weird, the way this is laid out. Because those GPIO pins, like they are accessible, like you could solder to them, but they're, they're only kind of accessible. They don't stick out very far. And now we can install our SSD. If you're not gonna use a 2280 SSD, which uses this hole right here, you're gonna use this little insert guy, except you need to do that before you mount the board. It has a little notch in it, and that is what holds the SSD in place. So the idea is you would screw this little holder in from the bottom, and that would hold the SSD down on the top. 
We don't need to worry about that for the SSD that we're using, this Sabrent Gen 3 4 terabyte, because it uses the already soldered in place stock hole. Look at that. We now have a Raspberry Pi with a four terabyte SSD on it. And I don't even need a power cable. All I need is to plug that ethernet jack in and we're gonna be good to go. Oh God, this is overkill on Enterprise 48 PoE, but I didn't have a smaller PoE switch, so deal with it. Now we get to plug it in and see if she works. But not before I tell you about our sponsor, Vessi. Here in Vancouver, our skies are getting gloomier day by day, which means some form of precipitation is bound to follow. That's where Vessi comes in with their dry sock guarantee. They have a wide variety of shoes to match just about any occasion, no matter what the weather has in store. And they're fashion forward, so the pair that you pick up for getting through a blizzard can come in handy again for that nice morning stroll when the sun's shining again. So head over to Vessi.com and treat a friend, a loved one, or your own feet with a a holiday gift to help them stay dry. Now, unlike some of the other PoE hats that are available on the market, this one, if you noticed in the name, is PoE Plus, not just normal PoE. So you need to make sure your switch is PoE Plus like this Ubiquiti Enterprise 48 PoE. And that means the Raspberry Pi gets full power, five volts, five amps, 25 watts on this board. So you're not gonna have any issues with USB peripherals if you plug them in. Uh, and apparently you don't even need to do any config. The Raspberry Pi will just be aware that it's getting sufficient power, which is great. Now, I'm not actually sure how you get an operating system on here, because it's not like, you know, you're not entering the BIOS of your Raspberry Pi. Usually you flash an image to the micro SD card with something like Etcher. According to the instructions on Pineboard's website, as long as the Raspberry Pi has new enough firmware, all we have to do is plug it into an internet connection and one that has PoE. Uh, and it should bring up like the firmware installer over the internet. I don't know if it's actually gonna work. This SSD is technically not brand new. I did format it, so all it has on it is a GPT partition table, but no partition, so hopefully it works. Oh, oh, okay, I guess you just need to plug in a keyboard and then it changes. Press and hold shift to stop boot and start net install. I had no idea you could do this on a Raspi. This is so cool. Now, if you don't have any storage in your Raspberry Pi, this is not going to be useful, but we have this NVMe SSD. So in theory, once this boots up and loads the installer, it looks like it's downloading right now, we'll be able to install Raspi OS onto the NVMe drive without having to do anything weird. No SD card required, no, I don't know, on the go cable, whatever. We should just be able to do it like this. Now, if you already have a working Raspberry Pi 5 with an SD card and you're wanting to add the NVMe drive on after, there are tools you can use to clone the drive. Hey, look at that! Huh? Raspberry Pi with an NVMe drive, that's sick! All right, now that we've got the Raspi working and running off of our NVMe drive, I wanna do a speed test. But before we can do that, uh, by default, the Raspberry Pi is gonna be running this SSD at PCIe Gen 2 by one, which is not that fast, but it is what the PCIe connection on a Pi 5 is certified for. However, you can tell it to run at Gen 3 speeds and that will be twice as fast. So I'm gonna do that. It's pretty simple. You just go into the firmware configuration. Thanks, uh, Jeff Gerling, for this lovely set of instructions here. And add a little line like this, DT param. I'm just gonna copy paste it because that's easier. Let's see if we're running at the correct speed now. Fizon speed, eight gigatransfers per second, width by one. Woohoo! <laughs> you can see it wants by four because this SSD is a by four connection by default. Um, but we should be able to run at like a gigabyte a second, potentially. Okay, we're ready to do a little speed test. We're gonna be using FIO, Flexible IO Tester, which is a little command line utility. And then I've got HTOP over here, which will show us the CPU usage and the disk IO and whatnot. In theory, the peak we can get is one gigabyte per second. Hopefully we can get pretty close to that. Hey, look at that. We're doing 780-ish mibibytes per second, which is probably 800 something megabytes a second. It'll tell us at the end. Let's see. Our write speed, 780 mibibytes or 820 megabytes per second. That's not 100% of what this PCIe lane can do, but pretty dang close. Let's try read speed now. Yeah, 850 mibibytes. What a weird word, maybe bytes. Gibby bytes is not nearly as bad, but maybe ugh, almost 900 megabytes a second. Pretty sick, eh? Off of a Raspberry Pi. And like, to be honest, I mean, the M.2 is getting a little bit warm, but 
if we're being honest with ourselves, warm to the touch is not that warm computer wise. The point is the M.2 worked. We didn't like lose power or anything while it was running a speed test. It's exactly what I hoped for. So in theory, you can just take this Raspberry Pi, unplug all this crap. So we've just got ethernet doing our power. We can get this monitor out of here. No keyboard, no mouse, just an ethernet cable with PoE. We've got a super fast Raspberry Pi that can do almost a gigabyte read and write per second. And we don't have to worry about the endurance of a little micro SD card. Now this thing can get stuffed in a menu board somewhere or in a drop ceiling or whatever. It would be cool take like three of them and you could build like a cluster of Raspberry Pis or maybe 20 of them and then put them in a rack and you don't have to run some stupid power spot. You just got PoE and you're good to go. It's kind of awesome. How much does this cost? 44 euros and it's sold out. <laughs> well, at some point you'll be able to get one. What's 44 euros? So roughly 46 and a half US dollars for this board. That would take your Raspberry Pi to be a little bit more expensive. I don't think it's gonna be the best price to performance if that's what you're going for, but if you just need one, you need something small, and you need it stashed out of the way somewhere you don't need to worry about it, this seems like a pretty awesome single board computer solution. I wish they just came like this. Like Raspberry Pi 6, that better have PoE and an M.2 slot. Come on. So thanks for watching guys, if you like this video, hit the like button, get subscribed, and if you want something else to watch, maybe check out the video I did on this MacBook. I'm using it now. I don't own it, but I am using it, and I quite like it. <laughs>